Okay, folks, so now it's time to make this diagram in SysML, okay? So I'm going to uh, open Asta SysML, create a new document. Um, there, the default package that gets imported is SysML, and there are all of these objects here. Do not touch these. Just pretend it doesn't exist. Um, I'm going to right-click this and create a model, add a package, and I'm going to say that this is my uh, fast software here. And I'm going to go ahead and save this to the desktop. So let's go to the desktop and call this fast.asml. Okay, and then I'm going to right click. I'm going to create a diagram and I'm going to create a block definition diagram. Okay, and so here is my canvas. Okay, and I'm going to put this over here and put this over here. And this is going to be kind of difficult to see, but we'll see how it goes. So the name of this block diagram definition is going to be, um, call, I'm going to call it SIM. So I have multiple modes of my software. I've got logger, uh, demo, and auto, and then hardware in the loop. Um, the SIM version, fast SIM, the simulation version, has everything. It's got the hardware, it's got the system controller, the helper functions, the dynamics, and the modeling. All of that is all put together into one big block. Um, the logger routine only has the helper functions and the hardware. Um, it doesn't need to run the simulation, so it doesn't have the modeling block at all. Um, the, the auto version uh, also doesn't have the modeling block, but it has a system controller because it needs to um, you know, control the thing via autopilot. Um, hardware in the loop version has two different instances, one that runs on your desktop and one that, run that, run that runs on the Pi, and then those two communicate with each other. We're eventually going to get down to the uh, internal block diagrams down here, but for now, um, I'm just going to leave this, uh, leave this as is. Okay, so the uh, first thing I need to do is I need to grab a block and drop that down here, and I need to call this um, sim, okay? And so that's going to go uh, down here. Then the easiest thing to do is to drop the other block. So I'm going to have, uh, you know, the helper functions over here, and then I'm going to drop another block, and I'm going to drop the modeling block over here, I'm going to drop the uh, dynamics block. Oh, sorry, the net dynamics is actually a part of. Oh, that's fine. Uh, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, but I'm going to put the dynamics block here. That's part of uh, of the modeling block. Um, I've got the hardware block, so there's hardware, and then I have the uh, system controller here as well. Okay, just like that. Once I have all that, I can start to connect everything together. So I'm going to put this dynamics over here. If you look here, this is basically a, a, a part of um, line. And basically I'm saying that these subsystems are part of the major, uh, oops, shoot, control Z, are part of the system controller. I'm sorry, part of the simulation, just like that. And I think there's a way to, uh, to right click, say depth arrangement, and let's see, let me pause this for a sec. So I went up here to alignment and clicked auto layout and it sort of auto laid out everything. So what I'm gonna do off camera now is basically put uh, the rest of this diagram in here and then auto lay it out and that way we can see all of it at once. Okay folks, that took quite a long time to get that in there. So it's dark now, I moved to a new location. Here we go. So. Uh, let me explain why I have this diagram the way I do. So the, th the four main blocks are, are the system controller, the hardware, modeling, and helper functions. And the reason why I have this all like this is because, as I was saying before, I've got different modes of the software. I've got the simulation only, software in the loop, the logger mode, the demo mode, the auto mode, and the hardware in the loop mode. So all of these helper functions are grouped together over there, MATLAB, MathP, Timer, Rotation, all of those are there because they always exist. Every single iteration of the software has to have that helper function. Now this modeling block only exists if you need the simulation environment. So OpenGL is separate because you could just run the simulation environment without OpenGL, which is why it's its own block. But if you're running the dynamics block, you need RK4, you need the system forces, you need the derivative routine, and you also need the environment. The environment has a ground contact model, the geographic lib model, which has gravity in the magnetic field, 
And then it also has the atmosphere, which has density, temperature, and pressure. And actually, now that I just thought of it, it probably needs a wind speed model as well. So let's drop that in there and, uh, and throw that in there. I don't have any code for a wind speed model, but I feel like eventually it'd probably be good to throw that in there. Okay, so that whole block, if you're running in demo mode or if you're running in auto mode, like you're running flight control software, you don't need the dynamic model in there. So that whole block gets turned off. The hardware block is basically everything that you need to import user data, output data, uh, read the receiver signals, send UART via serial or telemetry. I have serial and telemetry separate because telemetry is one-way communication, so that's sending via the uh, 950 megahertz radio to a ground station. And then the serial, I, it's two-way communication. So that's why I have them in two different blocks. So you can turn serial on if you want two-way communication with hardware in the loop, and then you can turn telemetry on if you want to just do one-way communication to a ground station. Uh, RCIO has the inputs and the outputs, so that's inputs from the, the transmitter and then outputs to the uh, servos and the uh, speed controllers. The sensors have GPS, barometer, IMU, and analog digital converter. The IMU obviously has an accelerometer, a radar gyroscope, and a magnetometer, so that's those three things there. I don't anticipate any new sensors getting thrown in there, but if I do, I can just add it to the sensor block and everything will work just like it always does. And then finally, the system controller, which the system controller is its own separate block because it doesn't need to exist if you're running in logger mode where you're just logging sensor data. And so there you go. So there is the uh, massive block there. Now, the last thing I want to do in this video is an internal block diagram, right? So this internal block, so this block diagram, if you look here, um, is for SIM. And the hardware block uh, has the, uh, these inputs from config errors and simulation. And so I need um, three inputs there. And then I've got a, the modeling block needs to send a modeling packet to the hardware. Uh, the hardware also has to send simulation data to the modeling block. The render file needs to go in here. And I was debating whether or not I wanted to put this in here, but I probably should. So I'm going to put the, uh, the render.txt in here. Must be given a new... Oh, yeah, I forgot. I already, I already have that block in here. Um, that's an interesting thing. If you delete something from the diagram, it doesn't actually get deleted here. And you'll, you'll notice it's still connected to the user input. So I need to delete that, uh, that connection and then uh, move some things around. So I'll put telemetry down here and serial down here and then render here. And then, uh, oops, grab a, oh, come on. All right, let's zoom in. There we go. So render is now connected. And then um, let's, let's fix the serial block and the telemetry block. So we'll put that over there, put this down there, and put that over here. This is what I did off camera. All right, so there's the render block. Um, so like I was saying, the hardware block has a three inputs from the text files, a one input from the simulation, from the model packet, from the modeling. The modeling has the render file, the simulation data. It's got the controller commands. And then the hardware also takes the controller commands. The hardware has to send the receiver signals to the system controller and the sense packet or the sense of class so it knows uh, what the system is doing in the environment, as well as config data. Um, so the easiest one, so the system controller needs three ports. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab a port block here, and we're going to drop one there, uh, drop one here, and drop one, uh, oh, it needs, yeah, it just needs three. And then we'll, we'll go ahead and drop one at the bottom there, okay? So the system controller has three ports, okay? The hardware block has one, two, three, four, five ports. So that's gonna be kind of complicated to get those on there. We're gonna have one, uh, two, uh, three, kind of like that up there. Let's put that one up there. Um, four, and then for the fifth one, I'm going to put it here. My OCD is like kicking in, but I think that's good enough. Okay. The modeling block needs one, two, three, uh, inputs. So we'll scroll over to the modeling block and that just needs three ports. So we'll grab the ports one, uh, two, and, uh, again, three. Okay. 
I have internal block diagrams for the hardware block. So I'm going to do an internal block diagram for sim and have the, the, uh, these parent functions um, pass information from each other. Now, if I want to do a internal block diagram for hardware, things get kind of nasty because then I need input, I need ports for UART, sensors, RCIO, and data logger. And then data logger is going to have its own internal block diagram. And so you can kind of cascade things further and further. I'm going to make all of these diagrams. And I guess I'll pause the video and I'll just show you the diagrams. Um, but I'm going to show you the internal block diagram for SIM. So what we do is we right click SIM, we click create diagram, and we say uh, add internal block diagram. And it's going to think for a while and then boom. So let's see. So it grabs system controller twice. Uh, do I have that's some um, that's kind of odd. Why did it do that? Do I have system controller in here twice? System controller was only in there once. Let's go back to the block diagram. Is system controller like connected twice? No. Okay. Uh, that seems odd. Maybe it was a bug. Who knows? Um, all right. So I'm just going to delete uh, this uh, system controller um, from here. Okay. Now, the helper function kind of just stays off to the side because it, it doesn't do anything. And then the uh, internal block diagram that I want to create, the way I have it is I have hardware uh, here. I have the system controller here. And I have the modeling block uh, here. And for some reason, it didn't grab all my ports. I have five ports on, I have three, three and three. I'm supposed to have five on the hardware block. Um, so can I, yeah, I can, I can grab another port. So I'm gonna grab another port, one, two, three, four, and then five, okay? Uh, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make, uh, I'm gonna show you this once and then, let me move this. Oh, they were all, oh, dang it, they were all there. They were just kind of combined. One, two, three, now I have too many. One, two, three, four, five, and I'm guessing six. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six. So I, 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 I doubted it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is make this block a little bit bigger. So there's the hardware block. And then I am going to put the three input files here on the left, okay like so, and then the three, uh, the two out, the, the two inputs, there's the model packet and the CETL comms come here, okay, and then the modeling block is going to go down here on the bottom, and that needs, the input is going to have the simulation data, which is going to come, come on, come on, come on. Oh, thank you. Simulation data there. And then the render file, we'll put it up here. And then the CETL comms here, okay? And then finally, we'll put the system controller over here. And we're gonna make it look semi-decent. Again, this is my OCD click kicking in. And uh, let's see, we're gonna have those two things. Up there, okay, and so you're gonna have the RX comms, the sense block, so let's actually make this a little bit taller, because it looks like all the inputs come from, come from hardware. So I'm gonna put this in line with hardware. We're gonna have the three inputs from hardware. There we go. Okay, so now what we can do is we can add a um, a, a item flow, and I can say uh, data is going to flow from here to here to that port, and I can I can move this guy down so that it looks better. What do you mean a knob cannot be placed here? Okay, the, be the best thing to do is to just uh, to delete it and uh, and do it again. So we're going to drag that over there, and then we're going to drag this over here. Okay. And I'll clean this up later, but basically, so now what we can do is we can grab a uh, text block and we can say that this is the RX comms, okay? And that gets uh, placed over there, okay? 
All right, so I'm gonna go uh, fix all of this and come back and show you what I did. Hey folks, I'm almost done, but the last thing I needed to do was add these uh, input files. And so I actually, because they're not part of, if you go back to the um, block diagram definition, these input files are actually going to this user input block and then the data logger block. And then the hardware block basically takes those and sends them to different places. And um, the reason why I wanted to do this is because a data logger is the only uh, object that opens and closes files. And so since these are user inputs files, I wanted to do it. Um, render, the, the one exception is the render block, and that's because OpenGL was written in a different uh, iteration of the software. And the way OpenGL works not now is it uh, runs in its own boost thread. And so I wanted it to just kind of be on its own. And so it, it handles all of its input output stuff. Um, but everything else is handled through the data logger. And so um, in order to get the internal block diagram to work and, and, and get the ports to, to be set up properly, um, I had to drag over um, these input files and label them as an external part. And then what I'm doing is I'm um, renaming the new role to user input to basically signify like, hey, this is from the uh, user input block and these get sent over um, to these ports here. And so I can connect all these up uh, very quickly now. And I think I am, I am done. And so the benefit of, of having this diagram, oh, I, I missed one. The benefit of having this diagram is now when I go build the software, um, the first thing I need to do is, is, uh, is make sure that these um, input files are created properly. Um, these four input files are created properly in the way that I want. And then I can make sure the helper functions are all in a folder where I want and called helper functions. And then I can make three empty classes called system controller, hardware, and modeling. And I know exactly how many inputs and outputs there are. So every single one of these inputs and outputs is a function, essentially. I basically need a function um, in the system controller where it can accept our XCOMs from the hardware. And so all of that basically is to say, you know, I, I can kind of get that, uh, I can look at this diagram and now I know exactly what um, each block can do. And like I said before, I have other block diagrams for, you know, the hardware um, and the modeling block. And so I'm going to make those really quickly off camera as well and then um, and post those in here, okay? Okay, so I just finished putting ports on the next level, right? So hardware, the next level after SIM is UART, RCIO, sensors, and data logger. And data logger is going to have four inputs, sensors is going to have three, RCIO is going to have two, UART is going to have four. Um, and the modeling block, OpenGL is going to have two, and Dynamics is going to have two. Um, uh, modeling's easy. Let's, uh, let's try and do that one first. So if I go over to modeling and right click and say create an uh, internal block diagram, it should just pop up with Dynamics and OpenGL, which is very convenient. Yeah, see, so it's, it's very simple. Now this is the really uh, thing that I think is, is super neat, is uh, up here there's a port on the side. Because remember modeling has uh, three external ports. And so if you go back to my, and I guess I don't have it pulled up anymore, let me go to my desktop and uh, open up maybe this one. Nope, uh, I'll try again, maybe this one. Yeah, so this one here, um, modeling, 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 here. Um, um, so it's got uh, ports on the side, external, right? Render, sim data, and, and, and the packets. And so, you know, we can go over here and see that uh, if we go here, the render goes to OpenGL. And so I can put OpenGL um, right here and put a port right here put a port right there on the side and then uh, drag a, 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 a block over here and uh, connect it in okay um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and just stop the video here I think I've done enough for this video you can kind of see uh, the block diagram definition uh, the sim here and then the uh, internal block diagram for one subset uh, below that um, or here, I'll finish this one and then, and then show it and then I'll end the video. Okay, folks, uh, for this modeling, I, I realized there's a couple things happening. So um, a UART packet from UART can actually come in the hardware and loop simulation via the CETL comms port. 
And so I had to go back to this one and add a line from hardware UART Cedal packet to the modeling bot in the same port. And then um, back in the modeling one, and um, the there's an output port here where the model packet goes out. And that model packet needs to go um, here to the hardware block. So um, I feel like there needs to be a port for the outputs as well. Um, and it looks like the, mo the modeling block only has like one one extra port, so like I just I just need to put an extra port right there um, to signify that that's coming out from that port. And so when I go back and do the hardware, I'm gonna have to go back and uh, and, and and fix all of these as well. Um, anyway, I, I hope this video is somewhat beneficial. Um, I showed the uh, the block diagram definition um, with ports and the sim block diagram. My computer is starting to lag like crazy. I think what I might do is do a follow-up video where everything is cleaned up and I just talk about the software. Um, and then I have the model block here as well. Um, I hope you enjoyed this and uh, I guess um, I'll see you in the next video.